Well, welcome everyone to Unscrew the News. It's Bruce Scholl, and I have uh, two fabulous guests with me. One of them uh, is a returning guest. It's Dave Weiss. And uh, our new guest is Jaron from Jaronism. And I had uh, seen these two rip apart the whole globe theory and the uh, NASA fraud that we uh, that we see on the news today. So I'm I'm really, really grateful to have both of you on here today to again expose some of this uh, crap that we're dealing with and and tell us why we actually are interested in flat earth and uh, the de deception that we see today. So welcome to Unscrew the News, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So uh, so we had uh, uh, Dave on last time. I had I had a guest with me, and it was uh, fantastic to to delve into this and to figure out. Um, so, in the process of that, I've I've talked to a number of friends of mine, pilots, and uh, obviously we've gone down the rabbit hole per se, right? And uh, and come up with some other questions. And one of them, one of them that I that I really want to get to is. Um, now I've gone through most of your website and I have not found this on there. So I was hoping that maybe you could tell me whether someone has done this experiment or not. But a lot of the stuff that you do is you compare globe stuff to the flat stuff. And uh, I wanted to know if if anybody has compared weather patterns, you know how we watch it on the satellites, blah, blah, blah. And we see the clouds rolling around on the globe. Has anybody compared that to the flat to see actually what, what, what is going on? Because, you know, you've compared the, uh, the, the flights and uh, the emergency landings, which blew my mind away, by the way. And I, I still have nightmares about it. I'm still thinking about it, but this whole weather pattern thing is one of the, one of the things that I was really questioning. Well, right yeah, here. I'll take that one. Start. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. I was just showing on the app. Uh, Jaron's gonna let you talk about it. I just pulled it up. Go ahead. No, it's great. I just was gonna say Dave's got this uh, unlocked. But yeah, when I first found this map, which was a AE map and azimuth equidistant on the site that let you see wind patterns, let you see ocean currents. When we used to set this thing to AE and be able to look at it, it's just so much better than the globe model. The globe model, you've got winds going in every different direction i'll go ahead and let you take it dave i don't know what you have recorded there yeah no i'm just showing this is actually a live weather map when you uh we're taught about the the jet stream that it swoops up from the gulf it goes all the way up to like greenland and it goes all the way down and when you convert that onto a flat earth map um it makes beautiful circles right now the wind patterns are a little messed up but you know in a couple of days they'll change they're pretty consistent but they they change you have these counter rotating winds um out here these pink and orange are that's you know 200 plus mile an hour winds um and then in here they actually rotate in the opposite direction well today they're going actually in the same direction except this band is going this way um this is why mm -hmm. um flights sometimes take longer take shorter sometimes the long flights from santiago to australia are canceled the direct flights they're like wait a minute we're not gonna be able to make it in a time and trick them therefore we're gonna change you to a 26 hour three connecting um connecting flight so <laughs> These are these, you know, when you look at the beautiful rings of the, the flat earth weather, uh, it, it's actually, it's clear as day here. This is a different altitude where you can see what's going on here. Um, it okay, just, so this is live. This is actually, ha this is what you're seeing now. This is live. Yeah. Whoops. Not going? recorded. Okay. Not what's recorded. crazy is we actually had to have somebody, we had to have somebody build this site because originally there was a website online that had this set up. But one day we went there and all of a sudden the map was gone. The one map that showed the AE in the middle with the uh, North Pole in the middle. And then we wrote to him and asked him what happened. And he just said, uh, I didn't want people to put so much importance on the North Pole. So I took it out of there. But really, he must have had somebody tell him to do it. Right. Right. And they have a whole bunch of different maps on there, right? You know, you can look at so there's it. There's like all, 10. Yeah, 10 different maps. But they took off the one that makes right. sense. The one. the one that looked at everything's Really? Great. Yeah. Uh, Slide, can you go up higher, Dave, and wins or no? Um, I could go the, at 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 ten HPA. It um, it's not so it's not so spectacular today, but it's not bad. And then Probably, what's the next one? Like two fifty. What's that? Go down one. What's it two fifty? Yeah, HPA two fifty or. Um, and, and what are what so are you showing? The, what are the differences here? I'm, I'm showing pressure levels. So yeah. it kind of gets you uh, you know an idea of where your altitude is. Uh, two hundred and fifty HPA is about thirty two thousand 
feet. Uh, 500 HPA is going to be uh, lower than that. It's going to be, and then surface is a thousand. Yeah, so there's, so there's 500. But um, often, quite often, it's just these beautiful, almost perfect circles. Um, but you know, but things change um over time, over you know from day to day. But they're very consistent well, winds that the airlines right. use uh for can their flight. A, can you show a globe on there or no? Uh no. I, oh, can I? I don't know. This is uh this should be an option, maybe. Bob wins. Oh um yeah, down at the bottom there says uh projection. Projection, okay, globe. Uh, yeah, and if you notice, so we just saw concentric circles and then uh I see what you're saying, Dave. It's not as bad as it usually is. Usually there's all kinds of yeah. nonsense going on. But one of the things that's a problem is that all the winds seem to be going to the west, towards the west, right? Is that what it shows, Dave? Go up to uh like yeah, 250. Well, no, it's going it's going east. I'll change the to, uh, I can't see what direction was doing, so I can't. So really 250, 250 uh -huh. is a little messy there. So that's kind of messy, yeah. I mean, compared to what you saw on the other map where everything was Certainly. Yeah, but I mean, it's still crazy that they've got these jet streams down in the south that go about you know anywhere from 200 to 300 miles per hour, and they go in the same direction that the Earth supposedly spins, which is just insane. Imagine you're spinning a basketball in your hand, and somehow the air is attached to it as it's spinning, which would be a problem in the first place. But then on top of that, the air that's attached to it is actually spinning faster than it, 300 miles per hour in the direction it's spinning. It's just insane. Wow, and it's and it's probably perfectly calm on on the ground. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we have still lakes, right? Still lakes, and uh, everything's not sloshing around. The water is not like right. sloshing back and forth from one one lake to another. Yeah, fantastic. Rippling. Rapids. No, that that makes a lot more sense when you uh, common sense says that the that the winds are going in a circle around there as opposed to on this marble, as you as you uh, call it. Common sense says that this. This land that's holding this water and it's not moving. Look at the perfect reflection of these mountains, right? This is a body of water that's not spinning at a thousand miles an hour, you know, orbiting in an elliptical, speeding up and slowing down 66,000 miles per hour, chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour. This is a lake that is standing still, not moving at all, period. Perfect. Now, one of the other things I, I, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this conversation is just we're going to flow and we just go with whatever we feel like. But, Jaron, one of the other things that I saw you talking with um, with Sean about on a on a on a fairly regular basis was the NASA videos that uh, you you decimate uh, mm -hmm. by by pointing out some of the uh, some of the um, I guess movie tricks that that they use. Uh, is there anything that uh, that's come up recently that uh, that you've pointed out? Well, I'd say that, you know, I don't watch them as much as I used to. I used to watch them almost kind of religiously because I felt like I'd be able to find a lot of mistakes, and we could. But then what happened with the SpaceX launch, which was the um, uh, Falcon Heavy test launch where he launched the car, you know, supposedly, yeah, uh, into space, right? So on that particular live stream, we caught them changing their live stream. We actually have it, you know, uh, all the evidence that you need. I have videos up about it where they had a live stream that was played the first time through, and then days later or a day later they were able to replace scenes inside that video and it still says live stream so you know on youtube if you change your comment it says edited you know you, you can't right. change your comment without it saying edited but these people were actually allowed why would be a uh, you know private space agency is allowed to do something that there's no other channel that even has that ability if you ever used youtube you know that once you've uploaded a, or once you've gone live and the live stream processes there is no way to go in and add scenes or anything like that but SpaceX was able to do that. So once I saw that, I just realized that no matter when these guys say live or whenever, I mean, the chances it it is live is rare. And then also uh, they can just change it. So it just, I started watching it a lot less, but we still find things all the time that there's, um, you know, how could you not? Uh, it's pretty obvious what they're doing. They do do a mixture of things. So it's, you know, one thing I've heard lately though, is people saying, some guy brought me a piece of footage the other day and says, I can't, I can't see a cut here. And I'm like, what do you mean? He says, well, I, I don't know where the cut is. And I'm like, okay, why are you looking for the cut? You're not going to find the cut. Like, we are way past that now, right? I don't know if you've ever seen that. Um, who's the group, Dave, that sings the song in the plane where they're bouncing oh. around? Okay, go or something? Okay, um, yeah, okay, go. Something like that. Yeah, and anyway, they're um, – thank you. They are uh, 
basically flying in a zero G flight or what they call the parabolic flights. And they do this whole music video, but you can't find a cut in the music video. And they even tell you, oh, we did eight different, you know, eight parabolic like, maneuvers. It was like 50. They spliced them all together. 50, yeah. You couldn't, yeah, you couldn't even right, tell. They spliced them all together. You don't see any edits. So, I mean, we just get used to this idea that, oh, if somebody made a video uh, faking space, that we would be able to find the, the edits or the cuts. Uh, and that's just not, you know, necessarily true, not anymore. Now, if you want to find the fake stuff, this is why I used to do a show or still do called the, you know, the NASA Comedy Hour, is I would just watch the stuff from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, <laughs> it's so bad, so bad. Okay, so something recently happened, and I don't know if you want to, if you have a comment on it, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm hoping that you guys have already debunked this. But when Elon had one of his most recent rocket launches, uh, some people were saying that the the rocket hit the firmament. Is that is that something that you guys are aware of? I'll give you my uh, my two cents on it, and uh, you know, flat yeah. earthers and globe earthers are are all going wild on this one. But if you watch that rocket with discerning eyes, um, it's not even as high as the clouds when the when it burns out. I, I don't see it going much higher than the clouds. Yeah, it exploded. I think it was all a show. This is my opinion. You know, maybe it was something went wrong and it exploded. But um, you know, my my opinion is the, there's no such thing as large rockets going into space. They're they're helium, you know, rocket assisted blimps. That's all they are, and they go very very slow. If when you when you actually look at them, um, so if that hit the firmament, let's say the firmament is only 72 miles up, that's pretty high. Um, how would you be able to see what we were shown? It, it that explosion to me didn't look much higher than the clouds. Jaron, what do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna say, but I mean, I've been to an air show a couple, couple times, and I used to live underneath one. And they would, you know, these planes would come and they would zoom by your house, and they'd be pretty high, and they would come by and be gone. You know, this is how fast a plane moved, and it would just be gone. It went too far. And I'm talking about in a minute. There's no way you'd see it. It's going, and that plane's going how fast? Six hundred, five hundred. So, yeah, right. So the chances that you're standing at this event and the thing takes off and it's lumbering up there really slow and it tips over and then everybody watches it for like a long time and they just keep watching it and keep watching it and i'm like well how f and then they show on the screen you know it's going up crazy nine thousand miles per hour or something um and so i just i don't believe any of the numbers that they give you on the screen this is what they do well is you know put those numbers up there and then everyone just assumes well, it must be true, right? right. I mean, it's got to be true. Why, why would they be and look at about it? So Elon's tweet, still hard to believe Star, Star, Starling is real. Is it say Starling? Star <laughs> Starship. Star Starship is real. It's still hard. You know, and then Michael Strahan, when he allegedly went up, he goes, it was unreal. That's all. That's his whole quote. It was unreal. There, I call that revelation of the method or just poking us in the eye. But just right. use your discernment here. Okay, this is Elon Musk rocket that's going to going to go to Mars. Look at the smoke coming off of here. Look how fast it's moving. If you had a smoky rag and you held it out at your car on the highway going 50 miles an hour, would it look like this? Not even. It would be it would be whipping by. That's at 50 miles an hour. And then somebody's filming this from the ground. Can how how look at the angle. This thing is not even moving. It's barely moving. This thing is supposedly accelerating Flying sideways. It, it, it exactly well are the clouds moving is it what is this right so this is it now falling out of the sky this is 10 tons 50 tons i forget what it is when it's empty it's falling out of the sky and somebody's underneath it filming it cool now look at this look at the smoke look at the, how, how fast the smoke's going is this going 10 miles an hour Seven thousand miles an hour it's moving very slowly but again how are they filming this where is this being filmed yeah. from I don't think it's moving. I think this is just sped up and the clouds are moving. And then, and watch this crazy landing. This crazy landing is insane. Let me jump forward a little bit. So this thing is falling. The engines are going to turn on and it's going to go upright. Somehow magically it's going to go upright. Now, if someone's skydiving next to this, maybe because this thing is falling, but somehow they got a perfect side shot of it. It makes no, no sense. It, it, it's impossible. So wait, I'm just jumping forward here. So it's going to land upright. So, all right. So, so here it goes. The three engines are going to turn on and it's going to magically go up. They don't even show it going upright. So here it goes. So three engines went on. They go underneath it. Now watch. Two of them are going to burn out. Up, out. Now you got what? Oh, now oh it's my just, gosh. Now it's just going to land upright. CGI smoke. 
and this thing is going to land up right and everyone's happy and hey and it looks like a penis i have i'm sorry it does <laughs> it look okay. like, i mean uh isn't it um what what is the amazon uh what is that guy's jeff bezos that looks jeff bezos i mean yeah. the blue penis right yeah oh, God, blue origin well, and that was the one that did questionable because you got that girl too that was supposedly went up that old lady, uh, Wally Funk, I think her name is. Yeah. And, uh, she said that she couldn't see the curvature of the earth and she was supposedly 62 miles. <laughs> so we always get these people who are like, could you see it at 40,000 feet? Could you see it at 120,000 feet? And then you get somebody who supposedly goes up to 62 miles and comes back and says she was upset because she thought she'd see the curvature of the earth and didn't see it. 62 miles. I mean, that's, uh, what what is that even sixty two times fifty two eighty? And when you watch uh, these, it's a lot. When you hundred twenty seven thousand feet. When you watch these rockets go off, they they go up and they curve. This isn't even as high as the clouds, and it's already going down. No, no, it's going over the curvature of the Earth. No, it's not. You, the Earth, how small is the Earth? Is it ten miles around? Right, right. And so so it's going right out into an area that you don't want to go in. It's the Bermuda Triangle, and it just goes out there. Now this is a chemtrail. Why isn't that one curving? You know, why, why is not going over the curve of the earth? That just shows you that this is going up. It's going down. It's a uh, parabolic trajectory, just like a guy throws a football goes up and it goes mm -hmm. down. It's the same thing. It goes up. And I don't think it's even as high as the clouds, which isn't high at all. Right. So now one of the things I, I would love if you guys can explain it again, but one of the things that in that video that I was talking to you about before we hit record, uh, that the people were asking all the pilots about about lift, uh, and and I'm sure you probably know what I'm talking about is did you have to make corrections for the curvature of the Earth or are you flying directly straight ahead? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I mean these guys will always use the same excuse that you get used to hearing gravity which is just a magic sauce of, of magic sauce right because they can invoke it whenever it's got no opposite which there's nothing else like that um and really you know they say there's no such thing as a perpetual energy machine right you can't have perpet perpetual energy there's got to be but if you think about it gravity everything is pick up your pencil right now it's per it's forever pulling into itself we're told so it's got a it's got a force it's somehow a perpetual energy making uh, a miracle device that you know NASA everything has gravity but everything has, everything has gravity so therefore everything is a perpetual never-ending energy device so they've been lying about that too but of course gravity doesn't exist there is no uh pulling anything in this pencil except for the fact that it's got density right so it's going to go uh in the down direction so there that's basically all it is uh it, go ahead dave they want you to believe that you know in an airplane flying 500 miles an hour it has to drop a mile every two minutes just to follow the curve of the earth and they're like well you know they just set the thing down one half a degree and it follows the curve of the earth and you wouldn't feel that a uh, cool story but if you were on the sr-71 blackbird that uh, goes uh 2300 miles per hour uh it would have to drop down 80 stories every second i think that's right 80 stories a second so think about that 80 wow 80 stories a second so what would happen to the pilots and everybody on there was one day to be plastered to the ceiling 80 stories a second to follow the curve of the earth and even the that's crazy degree, that the half degree that you talked about there at the beginning, Dave, is something that is not is known not to be the case. The planes actually angle their nose up. Their actually nose would be tilted up just a slight bit. And that's how you get the lift by the wind going underneath the wings. So they certainly don't point the nose down. You know, they point it at the horizon or up. So it's just one of those things where they'll always make these little excuses. But really, in practice, any pilot will tell you, uh, no, we fly flat and level to the horizon. Now, again, you're going to have people on the globe side say, oh, but they, you know, the magic gravity sauce is reaching up and grabbing this gravity. plane and actually pulling down gravity. There you go. Because you can see there that the, uh, the <laughs> Earth must be pulling down the plane you know, all directions. And if you are ever afraid of flying, because I used to be until I became a flat earther, and then all of a sudden I flew and was completely fine. And I think it's just not believing in that that made me go, oh, that's, okay, I get it now. The plane's flying. It's being operated by computers. It's not even being piloted by actual people like I used to think. So you really learn. Um, and this is one of the things people are like, oh, well, if they had long flights, they would have to be longer. They would be going faster. It's like the pilots wouldn't know. The pilots in that have any clue uh, whether their plane's going, you know, 400 or 600 or 700. They're just not going to know. Not when they're in the plane, unless you're talking about, oh, well, they've got dials and things. Yeah, of course. But uh, we think that they're actually going longer distances and faster speeds. And I actually heard the other day, Joe Rogan and, and Elon Musk were talking and Elon Musk got into this subject about planes. 
And he even said that the higher you go, the faster you go for the equal uh, the equal energy output as below that. So we're even being told, oh, no, I get too high and there's not even air to fly anymore. No, Elon's saying you can get up into that uh, 50,000 feet and even go faster. So they're probably moving planes in the south way faster and just, uh, you know, not telling anybody. People are like, you know, a flight from, uh, you know, United States to um, somewhere out, out uh, you know, Germany or whatever takes, uh, you know, X amount of time. And then the, the same flight in the south takes the same amount of time. Well, the flight in the south, and it's twice the distance on a flight of map, it's going twice as fast. I mean, if, if I'm leaving Connecticut driving to, um, to California in my uh, souped up whatever sports car, which I don't have, and my grandmother is driving her dots in and she's only going to um, Salt Lake City. Who's going to get there first? I'm going to get there first because I drive faster than her. Right. Doesn't mean that it's a shorter right. distance and people don't uh, want to look at it. But this is how you have to believe planes fly. But there's a problem. Earth is spinning. So it has to do this crazy figure eight pattern. And there's a problem. There's a huge I have a huge problem with this. OK, so to maintain a straight line, it has to do what we're seeing here now right here the surface of the earth is the economy equator is moving over a thousand miles an hour because it's making a circle just under twenty five thousand miles around once a day it's moving a thousand miles an hour so when the plane's right here it's moving sideways at a thousand miles an hour but when it gets up wow. here like northern alaska it's only moving like 300 miles an hour because it's making a much smaller circle up here so how does it change that sideways Tangent, tangential right. speed to maintain its course. I mean, you can't fly over a ball, especially a spinning ball. Unbelievable. So you could just fly from America, fly right over the top, and then land in America. Just fly over it, and by the time and it, it comes by the around. time you get there, it'll come around, and you land land there. And like, right. oh, sorry, oh, people. Maybe. Damn it. We got. <laughs> we didn't go anywhere. We didn't go anywhere. So so think about this. Think about this. You're flying and you're flying and and we're going to keep your point of view as you're always on the top of the world. So you're flying over the ball. So the stars that are not connected to the earth or in the atmosphere, they're going to go up. These stars here that are in front of you are when you get halfway down the ball are going to be above you. Does that make sense? Follow that. Yeah. So so as we're going, you know, the, the stars are going to precess up because here are the stars. I'm looking at them. And as I go over, they're now above me. Right. They're about no bubby. Simple, 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 simple. All right. So, um, so if I go here, hold on a second. And that not be the same no matter which direction you're going to. No matter which direction you're going. So here's a, a flight from I think it was Berlin to, to um, Brazil, and so it's going over the ball, and the pilot did a time lapse, and the stars are not going up. This is just when he turns a little bit, right? Google Earth, which we don't believe is real it's just a simulation tells you hey this is what you'll see stars processing up just like we showed you right right and this is what you're supposed to see so the google earth that didn't have curvature until early 2000s i think and they added curvature to it when people started waking up um versus reality reality now wow. the trolls come out and go well that's because the earth is spinning and it's negating it well the pilot filmed it in both directions and there it, it would have to go twice as fast in the other direction and it wouldn't negate it all the way unless you were flying, if it's spinning to the east, if you're flying west at the same twice the speed that you're going, then maybe you could you could uh, you right. could it could be uh, standing yeah. still. But when you go the other way, it would have to move twice as fast in the other direction. It's like right, yeah. It, it, it's but reality versus simulation globe nonsense. Okay, now you've done a lot of research on this, Dave. So how did we get to this problem? Like, how, how did we get to this um, this hoax? Like, how did we get fooled into this? Does it go back all the way to Galileo when when they were when they were professing that we were on a globe? Let me let me touch on that. Like yeah, well, I was oh. going to say, it, just, it seems that they did lie about all the stuff in the past, as far as Aristophanes and all this stuff. That, that was all added post hoc it seems like to me that a lot of those stories the burning of the library of alexandria um, i think our history is all uh, just basically told by some people in the 1600s 1700s if you want to call them that so i think it's mostly since then i mean we were told that christopher columbus that's what we were all taught that he discovered america and now they've changed that and say oh no it's because some writer messed up or got it wrong and so the oldest globe that we have is is 1492 the same year supposedly that 
Columbus discovered the world was round. So isn't that a co coincidence that the first globe that there is, there's no older, older globe than 1492, which is insane because we're told in 275 BC that Aristophanes figured out the circumference of the earth. So you're telling me it took 1700 years until somebody said, let's map the earth on a ball since it is one. Uh, so I think the whole stories that we're told are just fabricated. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, so you're talking about... Um, I Personally, you know, I think that these are all made up stories about all of these guys. Uh, they were teaching. I, if you ever saw my interview with Ruth, a um, 102 year old woman back in 2020, I was interviewing her about the World's Fairs. And she said uh, that they taught she they they taught her flat earth in uh, public school here in Connecticut uh, back in the 1920s. And since then, we found people that said even in the 1950s, they were teaching both because they didn't know. They're teaching could be flat, could be globe. And then, uh, you know, the Rockefellers took over the education system, which they they, right. they made it the indoctrination system in the early 1900s. And they also you know, made sure that schools were underfunded. So they didn't have any money. And then they would supply textbooks that, you know, if it cost them $50 to make each textbook, they would sell it to the school for $2. So nobody could possibly compete with, uh, you know, hey, we got better textbooks. Well, you can't do it unless you, uh, you know, wow. unless you can, uh, you know, come up with a, a better price and you just can't do it. You know, one of the things I say is go, go into Costco and go to the book section and you'll find these beautiful, high, high quality, nice paper bound gloss embossed books, you know, this thick on the best paper sewn back. Amazing. Couldn't be any more high quality, gigantic book on dinosaurs, $19. Right. There's no way, no, no possible right. way that anybody can make that for $19 and then sell it to Costco you know, where they're going to mark it up. This is what they want you to have and treasure. They want you to, to be lost in this world because we'll get into the because in a little bit, but um, I just wanted to touch on Aristophanes. For those of you that don't know, Aristophanes, he did his experiment where he said, oh, I could see the reflection of the sun on the bottom of a well. That means the sun's directly above me. Great deduction. True. And then he said, well, if I put a guy, I sent a friend 500 miles away and I'm going to have him walk and count his steps to make sure he knows he's 500 miles away. And somehow um, we're going to be able to talk to each other. Maybe they had a long string and a cup and they could talk, you know, pull it really tight, and talk to each other. And um, they said at the same time, you know, here's our Tosnes, no shadow. And then his buddy got a shadow and he can measure the length of the shadow and then do some uh, perfectly good math to figure out the, the circumference, the diameter of the ball. And um, they're like, well, that's great. And Eratosthenes assumed that um, all sun rays come in parallel. They, they all come in parallel, which is fascinating because nobody's ever seen parallel rays um, ever. No one ever sees parallel rays. Uh, you know, right. people, um, people, you know, if, if this is what parallel rays would look like and uh, no, they never happen. So the, the getting back to, to this, um, on a flat earth with a small local sun, here's Eratosthenes and here's his buddy. And it's the same angle, same shadow, do the same math. You can figure out the sphericity of this flat plane. Great. Yeah. So, but he, so, but he determined that it was round because of, because of his, his uh, arithmetic is basically what you're saying. Math is not reality. I mean, I could do, I could do some math uh, to show you that in four days, you're going to have $10 million in the bank, but um, we're going to start with the assumption that you have 1 million today and we're going to double it uh, every day until it's 10. <laughs> so I, I made the assumption <laughs> that you had a million in the bank. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. It's not happening. Not happening. <laughs> well, maybe it'll happen. Now, I don't want to jinx you and having a million dollars in the bank, but <laughs> if you have a million dollars, please take it out of the bank. <laughs> and anybody can do this for themselves by just grabbing two items and putting them on your desk in front of you and hold a flashlight above one of them. And you'll see that they have different shadows. Well, one underneath the flashlight has no shadow. The one that's kind of away from it has a shadow. Well, then according to Aristophanes, all we need to do is do some math and we'll figure out exactly how sphere spherical your table is, even though you're sitting at it and know that it's a table. So right. this is how simple it is to debunk that. And yet it's the first thing anybody brings up. Well, what about the Greeks knew 2000 years ago? No, they didn't know because some guy did an experiment that we can do on our table and right. know that it's not a sphere. Then how are we going to give somebody credit and say, oh, well, he knew it was a sphere. Well, that how? And then I mean, here, even on this board here. Oh, good. No, I was, I was going to say back in the 80s, uh, the, the show Cosmos came out with the wonderful Carl Sagan, billions and billions of stars. And he's showing you how, um, you know, it, it, Aristophanes and his buddy, and he's like, the shadows are the same if the earth is flat, but then he bends it and he shows you, well, look, the earth must be a globe because the only way to do it is to bend it. So no shadow and shadow, and then you can figure out by the length of shadow. Again, he's pre-assuming a ball. 
Like, right. Yeah, no, I mean, if he put that flat, I mean, the problem with that is going to be you're talking about a very close location, right? This very two sticks are right next to each other with a yep. far away sun. We're saying that the sun is close to us. So, and then, you know, that's the difference. If the sun is close to us, if you took a flashlight and put it right above one of those uh, pillars there, well, that, that one's going to have no shadow and the other one's going to have a shadow. So right. they just, uh, it's all trickery. It's all wizardry, basically. They're, they're just fooling you. And you have a choice to believe them or not, but it's really uh, shocking the amount of people, right? That I, like I say, we're not spinning and we're not flying 1.2 million miles per hour right now. And I'm crazy. I mean, does that make any sense to you? That if you, to be sane in this world, you have to believe men who tell you that right now you're flying through space, a vacuum unimpeded on some giant ball of rock and water and magma and a liquid core and iron core. And you're doing all that and flying through space at 1.2 million miles per hour and you don't feel a thing. And so you're smart if you're, if you agree with the men telling you that that's what's happening. And if you're like me and say, no, nah, I don't think that's happening. I don't think we're moving at all. I pretty much pretty positive of it. Uh, then you're a crazy person. That, that's the world that we live in. Well, we're in 2023 and anybody that questions anything is, is uh, canceled as we know. Um, right. I mean, it, it, it is insane, but why do we, why do we even care? Like, why are we caring that, that <laughs> we're not on a globe? I mean, what does it matter now? I think it's, I mean, people should recognize we're being lied to, number one. And if they can't recognize that, then they probably you know, shouldn't be watching this. But once you realize you're being lied to about one thing, then you kind of start to peel back that onion. And it might take a while for people to peel every layer of the onion. What is this? What is it? But if you go to flat earth and you find out that, it kind of unpeels the onion all at once. All of a sudden, uh, you recognize that everything that they told you about, oh, you can't have conspiracies that are worldwide. You can't have conspiracies that are across government. You can't have conspiracies that span years you can't have conspiracies that uh, it's, it's always this it's impossible it's impossible once you realize it is possible uh think of everything else they're lying about and it's just the easiest one anyway it should be the easiest one because they lie about things that we can check and test and go verify right here on earth so do we really think that they're telling us the truth about a place we can never go no that would right. be the first thing they would lie about right you know dave or jaren whichever one of you has it but there's a now, I think you guys talked about a flat earth map that showed, and, and I think we talked about it before, Dave, was um, was uh, not aliens, but um, extraterrestrial. And that, that name was really specific because uh, I think you said that outside of that um, Antarctica circle is extra lands, and that's how we use the word extraterrestrial or you think that that's what it means well so first i want to say before we go over here and i love going over here is you don't need to speculate on anything to prove that the earth is flat and stationary and there's no curvature um by the way flat you know the earth is not flat it's topographical plane it's level water the science of water proves that uh it's level and the science of water proves that we're not moving uh and all observations prove that we're not moving so um what is beyond the shoreline of Antarctica? That's a great question, and uh, I sure want to know. But um, we have the Antarctic Treaty uh, that, uh, whoops, the Antarctic Treaty, where am I going here? Um, the Antarctic Treaty right here um, that happened in ninth after Admiral Byrd went out there and said that he found more land bigger than uh, the United States filled with resources that no human has ever set foot upon. That's interesting. But, like, where is that land? Well, what do you mean it's past the South Pole? That would be over near Australia and, uh, and uh, Africa. But uh, I don't. They they haven't reported any extra land, and so what's he talking about? So the the question is, what is out there? We want access to go out there. But let me let me run down um, a a uh, a couple things here. We we found some ships. So you can go on a ship tracking site, and you could see these ships all over the place. And we saw these ships way inside the shoreline of Antarctica. An active ship. Like how does a ship? get inside Antarctica, this one's 730 miles in. And 730 miles in, Google Earth tells us that's 1.9 miles higher than the ocean. How does a ship get in there? Was it a, a melted river? Well, that would mean he'd have walls on the side of him almost two miles high. That's, that's pretty, pretty scary. Um, and then we found another one. We found a whole bunch. This one's 905 miles, right? That's How does a ship get in there? So the question is, where the, what, what is going on in there? You know, is the earth maybe set up like this? Maybe this is where we live. Maybe this is what they say is we're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. And maybe when they go from Santiago to Antarctica, they take you right here. What if they took you just to this island? Would you know that it's an island? 
Would you know that it's not Antarctica? This is bigger than the USA, Mexico, and Canada doubled. It's bigger. So you don't know wow. anything. You don't know anything. That's like pulling up to the South Shore of Long Island and going, I know what's going on in California. I know it's I, I know what's going on. No, no, you don't. You're you're on you don't even know what's on the friggin' North Shore of uh of Long right. Island. So so you don't know anything. We don't know what's out here. This interesting map that was supposedly found in a Buddhist temple and uh, from uh, 10 centuries ago. It was published in Hawaiian newspaper in 1910, I think. So so um, on one of those ships that we clicked on the, the get the info about what's the ship doing or what, what is it? And normally you get all the information. This one, all it told us is what the ship was 580 meters long and 80 meters wide. That's a gigantic ship. And all it said is it was um, registered to the nation of Karabate. Karabate, I probably pronounced that wrong. Um, and so we looked it up and we found it. I can put a pin on it because you can't even see it. It's a tiny little sand atoll in the middle of the South Pacific. And America and China, everyone's like, this is a very important trade route. Very, very, very important trade route. And um, they, uh, China gave them $10 billion recently. I think America probably gave them the same. Like, what is going on here? Why do we need, why do we need to go to go there. Well, doing some research, you know, when the hive mind is uh, looking into flat earth, some other, someone else found there's a Captain Cook Hotel on uh, a bed and breakfast, whatever it is, on Karabati. <laughs> Captain Cook is the guy that tried to circumnavigate Antarctica and it, he right. went over, you know, 68,000 miles, which only makes sense on a flat earth, but that's interesting. Maybe it's just somebody that's obsessed. Um, so we went and on the ship tracking site and we said, look, there's some active ships and Karabati. Let's see what they are. And all of their destinations said unknown or Christmas Island. Now, doing some research, some people say Karabati is called Christmas Island. I found Christmas Island on the other side of Africa. Um, I don't know what that is, but the whole thing about Christmas and the North Pole and Santa and, and anagrams for what Santa is. And I just found it very perplexing. So the question is, you know, what's going what's going on out there? But real quick. And looking at time zones on a ball, North Pole and South Pole, you have 24 lines separating each time zone, like a sections of an orange. And as it spins, mm -hmm. you have your time zones, right? So you have all these straight time zones, but we have this one at the date line that does this crazy jig jag, zigzag. Let's zoom in on that. It cuts over three and a half time zones. Like why? What, what is going on here? And guess what's in the most suspicious spot of all? That would be Kiribati, right? So that's kind of like strike three or strike four for me. Plus uh, there's a whole bunch of nuke testing uh, stuff that was uh, allegedly going on there. But I say maybe it is an important trade route. Here's here it is. And they're going out here to the extra lands. Maybe they're trading for technology or weapons or food, tuna fish or children. I, I don't know. Cause we're not allowed to go there, but what if there's another trade route from here out here and another one from here out here, how would you ever know? Because you never heard of Karabate until you heard it from me. And that right there, that little line there is where uh, Summer's Gate is. Yeah, that, that's right. It's also seen at the Getty Museum, which is, is crazy. If you look from above the Getty Museum in L.A., they have a huge rock fountain that is uh, set up exactly like the Flat Earth map. And then it's got this exit way that water pours out into another pool that comes exactly out where the Summer's Gate is and then fills out a whole other ocean. So pretty crazy. Wow. Do yeah. we have, do you have an, an image of that or? So, yeah, you pull it, pull it up and why, why I show this. So here's the map of, um, of the world. And then they basically just cut it out and they wrapped it around a ball and they said, you can't go here to this white area at the bottom. You can go to the shoreline. We'll take you right out here, way out here. And that's all you get to see. Yeah. You don't get to see the inside. This is all that there is. Okay. So, that's how they literally hid the rest of the world from us. In my opinion, that's my opinion. We want the right to go explore. You know, have you looked into airships from the past? I, I have. Yeah, previously, but probably not as much as you. There, there's airships that are the size of that carry thousands of people on them, like cruise ships um, and traveling all over the world. And that technology that has been taken away from us. That has been hidden from us because if you have an airship that can pull energy out of the air, which there's energy, I challenge anybody, if you have a drone, get a, a, a get some thread thickness copper wire, lightest pop copper wire you can, a long strand of it, tie it to the drone and have it go up. When that wire is hanging in the air, I challenge you to go grab that wire. It's filled with electricity. You get jolted. Really? 
Yeah. So there's, there's free energy everywhere, but they've taken that away from us. You know, Te- Tesla, you know, did it with his Warden Tower in Long Island. And, um, you know, he was powering the World Fair well, wirelessly for free. And JP Morgan's like, well, what am I going to do with all this copper wire? And how are we going to fleece all the people and make them work for their entire lives to pay for power? You can't have that. And they basically took him out. Jaron, go ahead. Right. Right. Yeah, I'll bring this up. Uh, one second. Which screen is this? So this is the Getty Museum. Oops. Okay, there we go. All right. Now let's see. Good enough. <laughs> so you should be able to see it on my screen there. That this mm-hmm. is the Getty Museum. This is a, a fountain here, and you'll see that it's got this inside. It's got tall rocks, kind of a, you know, this about this high. And then there's this exit way that has water that pours over this edge into another pool that goes around. And if you see if we can kind of exit this up, that that pool is almost exactly like the Flatters map. Well, it's kind of an ugly picture there. But you can see like where Australia would be. <clears throat> and then you get that Summer's Gate is right here, which is kind of North America here, South America here. And then this is the where about Hawaii would be out this way. So pretty crazy that that's you know, their main fountain. And then you've seen the one at the um, uh, Dave, you remember the place that- in Australia and uh, at, um, yeah, at, at um, I'll, I'll find Darling Harbor, Darling Harbor in uh, in uh, yeah, there you go, Australia. Yeah, I'll show that. Darling Harbor. Uh, Dave, tell us what Summer's Gate is because it's it seems significant. Yeah, so let me um, let me yeah, if you have that other map, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So if I just go on There's... on the app and you just put in map, um, well, I think I'm sharing real quick. I'll just show this real quick. So this is Darling Park, and they've got in there. Oops, let me see where I was right to slot. Uh, maybe that's not where it is, Dave. Is that where it is? I think so. like Dar- Darling right? Harbor. See that maybe here. I'll find it one second. I I've seen it before. It's right. Oh, here we go. Wait, maybe it's in this. It's like the little courtyard. They have they have the they have the flat Earth map. It's 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 amazing. It's like a pond with the map in it. But um, here's um here's the, what Jaron was showing you. I mean, oh, here it is. Here it is. Look at next to the Flower of Life too. Look at this. Wow. So now that you know is is cut and dry. The flat Earth map, obviously. Oh. Uh, go down here. Oops. Can't do that. Let me see if we can drop down in there. Okay. Oops. Is that where I wanted to go. Let's try one more time. Not that far down. <laughs> Let's try one more time. Am I going to be just in the park some more? Yeah, I don't know if they have any pictures. Oh, well, it, we it's a perfect flat earth map. This is. Yeah. With the North Pole. You got the North Pole up top, and you've got uh, you know, all your countries Australia, Africa, North. Isn't America. that interesting? Yeah. So pretty crazy. And then it's got the flower of life. It's a beautiful. A uh, little park. I mean, this has got the flower of life on it. So, right. there you go, Dave. And so, so here is uh, you know where Car- Carabate would be. And you zoom out. This is what they call the the summer gate. That uh, maybe maybe the ice wall doesn't go all the way around. Maybe the ice wall, you know, the containment of our water is a million miles away. And there's other ponds, right? I, I've even heard people postulate that uh, you know this whole thing about global warming, which seems to be uh, you know a total hoax. But uh, also people are saying, what if the earth does get warm every once in a while? And when it does, parts of Antarctica melt and open up fissures that allow people to go through. And yep. that's why their big stress is about keeping the earth cool because they don't want those passageways to open and somebody find them. What if we, uh, lived, what if we lived right in the center of that pond right there? And then you zoom out. These are other ponds, whoops, other ponds across the plane. And they might call those planets, a planet, a piece of the plane. And so these could be other worlds. Now, I'm not saying this is what is going on. I'm not saying this is what's going on. I'm saying that if the earth is flat and we do live in a flat world, which we do, and we live in this pressurized system, the plane could extend way bigger. Our sun is small. There could be other suns out there versus if that's true. No, nobody would know. Nobody would know because right. we are lied to about it. And we're told we live on a ball and everybody thinks, imagine how smart that is. Cause then everybody thinks that everything's been discovered, right? Nobody's going in and in researching anything. Nobody's actually trying to, uh, be an explorer and go anywhere because we've all been convinced not through actually going out and determining it for ourselves, but being told, nope, sorry, if you go any direction, you'll come back to where you started. And that's just the way it goes. But if you think about it throughout history, everybody who was in a tyrannical government, they got up and left. That's why the world is populated by people because they got tired of their governments being overbearing and they went and started their own governments. And that's the story of how America came to be, right? right. There was 
everybody right. being you know uh, taxed and everything in the in Britain, and so they came over to the new land, started a new country. Well, imagine if there's an infinite amount of places where we could be going. What if there's starting a, our own world? A million other continents. Right. So what that if, sucks that we're yeah. told, and we just get stuck here, and then working as slaves for uh, well, some psychopaths. And why would the people, if they're out there, why would they ever come back? Why would they want to come and tell us? Because all that's going to happen is that uh, they might get captured or held by these guys or killed. And uh, it's just not going to benefit them at all. No. Right. They've well, already I, gotten out of here. They've already got. It's our, our little prison. Right. I mean, it's right. it's essentially they've set up a prison uh, that we don't even know that there's walls. Did I show you this? Last might not even I, I, call, I call this. How, how would you know? Right. So what if we lived in a time where there was um, no radio, no communication, no nothing, no airplanes. We just had some boats and uh, we all lived in, you know, um, you know, like like they supposedly were in the 1800s, right? So we take the map of the world and we, we build a gigantic wall. Donald Trump is uh, his grandfather, great-grandfather. He builds this giant wall here. So no one can go beyond that. So we got all Canada and US and, uh, and there's a wall, wall up here. And this is, this is what they do. So they draw a circle and they take it and they wrap it around a sphere and then they put you in school and they go, this is your world. This is all that there is. And you're not allowed to go here. So if you take a little boat off of the shoreline and you start going what would be outwards away, but, you know, down yeah. a ball upside down, you're not allowed to go here because we have to protect the ice and the penguins, right? You can't, you can't do that. This is off limit, right? right? So you yeah, wouldn't and know about England and, and, the, and, the, and the Australia and Africa, right? So I say they did the same thing. What if we were here? This is where we live in the center of this pond. Right. And we have the outer rings, the, you know, the Lord of the Rings, but that is what read that again. Right. And they cut it out. They wrapped it around a sphere. They literally put you in a prison and you would, you're like Truman, there's nothing else to discover. You know, I want to be an explorer. There's nothing else. You're not allowed to go here. It would be, it would be one step away in that instance of having it sewed up. And that's what they did is they created GPS. Once they did that, they probably wiped their hands and walked away. Like you watch how long this will last because now people can know exactly where they're at on our fake world by having this device. And if we tell them the device tells them where they're at in the world. So you get people now who say, oh, well, uh, you know, GPS proves that we're on a ball. Well, you can easily ask them if we lived on a flat world like Dave was showing, and then they wrapped it on a ball at that point, could, uh, what are they called? Cartographers, could mathematicians, could they project a flat plane onto a ball? The answer is of course, yes. And then you say from there, could they make GPS? Oh yes. Okay, great. So now you've got a world that was flat that now is, projected onto a sphere and gps tells you where you're at on a sphere but there is no actual sphere You're why do we flat earth. why do we use longitude and latitude x and y on a three-dimensional um object shouldn't there be an x y and a z axis you know for our coordinate system we're using a flat coordinate system on a three-dimensional wow. object what's going on there mind blown yeah <laughs> it, you know what this is mind blowing but but don't worry people when you realize the earth is flat and you have your mind blown there's bigger things happening on flat earth that'll blow your mind even further. So don't worry. You'll be able to have your mind blown and again and again and again. All right. Because there should be world. enough things to make good. Yeah. I was going to say there's enough things that people should start to, you know, torque their head. I mean, the, the big one for me was first of all, the uh, East and West being circles is, you know, I was always under the impression or thought that, okay, if I go East, uh, I would come back to where I started. And that's why the Earth is a globe, because no matter where you're at on the Earth, if you go east, you'll come back to where you started. And that's not the case. If you go east, you're going to walk in a circle to get back to where you started. And at first, this didn't make sense to me. I said, well, wait a second, but north and south are, well, the, the weird thing is, is that people don't even know this. North and south are much different than east and west. North and south are cardinal directions, meaning that if I'm standing north of you, you are directly south of me. And if I'm standing south of you, you're directly north of me. Those They're always the same, meaning that, you know, if I'm looking south, Okay, great. You're south. Great. I'm north of you. East and west don't work that way because if I look at somebody 90 degrees east of me, I am not 270 west of them because east and west are circles. But Dave's showing that mm. right here. Okay. So look, right here, I'm going to try to dead reckon west, right? So as soon as okay. I go, look, the needle turns because the magnet's here, I'm going south. If I don't turn, I go in a straight line, I'm going south. All straight lines go south. Right. And they'll take you out. But you have to turn like, you know, if the if the center of your town was a giant magnet, and you had a compass and that would be pointed towards that giant magnet. You can walk around your town heading east and west and end up right back to where you came. Does that make your town a sphere? Right. But if you go south on a ball, you should end up over here. 
but no one's ever done it. No one's ever gone from Santiago right. and ended up in Australia. Has never been done. Look, I'm going north. I'm going north. I'm going north. Oops, I'm going south now. I'm still going a straight line. I'm going south. Every straight line is south. South is every direction away from the center. I'll show this real quick just so you can see what I mean by the difference is if this person's here standing looking south, and you can see up here on this thing it's showing when I get to 180. So there's 180 degrees south, right? So yeah. if I save that and then go from there, oops, one second. Okay. Now I go from there back up. Well, that person is definitely 360 degrees to my north because that's how north south works, right? So if I stay on that same line, you'll see that it's zero degrees or 360, right? Up here. So that's great. That's how north south works. So you would think east yeah. west work the same. That's the way I was taught. You should. Um, yeah. Let me see this. So now we go here. Now let's do instead east west. So now if I go, let's say somebody's in uh, here in LA. Oops, come on. Oops, I accidentally did path. There we go. So if somebody's in LA, why is my thing not working? Clear. All right, let's try again. Line. Now work. Okay. Yeah. So if I go 90 degrees, you'll see it's going to be right about there, right? So that's 90 degrees and 21, 25 miles. So then this person should be 270 to the west because this guy's directly east. Right. So if we throw right. that one and we go now, let's go see if he's exactly 270. And we're going to go line. Yes. So now we go here and see this should be exactly 270, but uh oh, it's 289. 270 is here. What? So, so east and west are certainly not the same. They're locally the same. And if we got down in here and looked at the nitty gritty and said, where's east and west with here? Right. Be across east and west. But if you kind of zone out, and look at the larger picture, you're actually east and west are headed towards the equator. You'll notice from here, this is towards the equator. From here, it's towards the equator. So it's crazy because they've always told us too that, oh, the sun rising east and um, 90 degrees and setting west at 270 uh, is some sort of proof of the globe, but it's not. It's because on that day where those things set at 90 and 270, or sorry, rise at 90 and set at 270, is that everybody on earth is actually looking at the equator. So if I drew lines from here to, to 70 degrees 270 for everybody, uh, you'll see that they're all going to be looking in the same direction. So it isn't proof of a globe. Wow. Uh, it's a proof it, of flat. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it, there's some issues with it with flat, uh, but the sky explains most of it as far as, you know, us thinking that there's a atmospheric dome that kind of bends the things in the sky. Yeah. Uh, we don't see everything in the same location, right? So your sun is different in a different location in the sky than my sun. So there's a lot of things that um, uh, still need to be uncovered. Dave, one one more thing before we go. Can you explain, because um, it, it kind of perplexed me, but how the sun goes around, like if, if you're talking about flat earth and how the sun goes around. And now you have a demonstration that you use on your on your app. What is going, who's ringing? Oh, sorry about that. My, my Skype was uh, ringing. Like, what is going on? Um, so... This is my app. It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. All my stuff, my links, uh, you want to book me for a show, you want anything, everything, including the summit, which we're going to talk about, which all of you that are listening to this that are interesting, you need to go to. It's a week from this Friday on uh, December 8th and 9th. Jaron's going to tell you about that in a minute. But um, everything will be found at flatearthdave.com. Everything. That's all you have to remember. Don't remember any other websites, flatearthdave.com. So, so here is the, the sky is a clock. It's the perfect clock. And, you know, what, what's the finest time piecing, time piece keeping instrument in the world? People, well, it's got to be a Swiss watch. Well, guess what? The sky clock's more accurate. You know why? Because the Swiss watch is set to the sky clock. That's what time is based off of the sky clock. So we live in this crazy gravitational beehive, but somehow it keeps perfect time. Makes no sense. The sun is the hour. Han, I'll speed it up. It goes around once every 24 hours. It keeps track of the hours in the days. Perfect. It laps the moon once every 28, 29 days. So the moon and its phase and its position keep track of the weeks and the months. There used to be 13 months of 28 days, and then one day reset equals 365. So, okay. so that, that's, um, that's how the sun goes around. And it also migrates out to the Tropic of Capricorn out here and into the Tropic of Cancer in here. So when it's in here, it's our northern summer because the sun is closer. Closer sun mm. is warmer sun. Farther, you know, right now it's heading out to December. The people out in Australia, it's going to go right over Australia. It's going to be nice and hot in Australia. That's where they have their, their summer. And then if we turn the stars on, the stars are going just slightly faster than the sun. So they'll lap the sun 
but it takes 365 times around. So the stars keep track of the seasons and the years. It's way simpler than the, the crazy, ridiculous globe where we're no traveling kidding. 186 million miles from one side of the sun to the other. We're traveling 4.4 billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before. We're curving. All the other stars are moving in all their directions. But some reason, they never change. They're always the same. They're right. And we have such are. a difference. Yeah. We have such a difference north and south. And if Dave shows you here, see that map. I mean, on this map, you would have a difference north and south because the north is getting that sun that gets close to it, right? And then it migrates out and you would expect the outside to be colder. And that's exactly what we see. And then there's no animals that live in the south, just the penguins and maybe a couple birds. But in the north, there's penguins. I mean, penguins. There's uh, polar bears. There's uh, squirrels, elk, uh, deer, you name it. All kinds of animals, you know, hundreds. And in the south, there's no... I mean, even Captain Cook said there wasn't a twig to use as a toothpick. So there's not even like bushes or little trees or little branches growing anywhere out there. But in the north, everything grows. If we if we lived on a if we lived on a ball, there would be at equal latitudes north and equal latitudes south. There would be equal life, equal temperatures, equal everything. And it's not. It's not that case at all. The the inner north, as Jaron was saying, has more life, uh, animals, plants, and trees. And uh, Mm -hmm. and out south, there's nothing. There's nothing after, was it 65 degrees south or maybe a little farther? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, even before that. Yeah. So, so it, on a ball, there'd be symmetry. There's not. Um, and we're also doing an experiment right now. Like people say, well, when the sun's in here, it goes around once a day making this small circle. And out here, yeah. um, two, three, four, five, six. So the sun's out here in December. Um, it's making a bigger circle in the same amount of time. So it has to be going faster. What makes it speed up and slow down? Well, the the hour hand is going the same speed. It's just out here and it's going faster. And we're doing some measurements now where people are measuring um, from sunset to darkness, sunset to pitch black. And everywhere in the world, it's getting shorter and shorter. If the earth was a ball, it would be getting longer and longer um, in December for people out right. south. Because in June, we have like 90 minutes of light after the sun sets. So in December, Mm -hmm. they should have 90 minutes of light. They don't. Now they have everyone, no matter where you are, topographically and laterally, um, latitudinally, you would have different amounts of daylight. But the time from sunset to darkness is what we're measuring. And um, right, some days might be you know local weather might you know there's clouds on a certain day or it's clear certain days you might get a little more or less. But we've noticed that the trend is certainly uh, in that direction, meaning that if somebody in June starts you know figures out what it is and then somebody in december everybody on earth will report the same thing that there's less time after sunset in december which shouldn't be the case it should be flip-flopped opposite for the south than it is the north not everybody on earth going through the same thing but if you look at the flat earth map everybody on earth is going through the same thing right going through either the sun being faster or the sun being slower yeah and uh, i i was just watching an old uh, rob skiba video and um he he had video some guy was on went to the tropic of cancer and film the moon when the moon was on the Tropic of Cancer, and then film the moon when the moon was on the Tropic of Capricorn. And he put his camera up, and the moon moved across his camera frame at a faster speed over the Tropic of Capricorn, proving that. Really, I never faster. seen that. Yeah, no, I just saw that. I'm, 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 I'm trying to find the original, but um, I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> it went, went from one side of the screen to the other faster. So that's very I didn't even think wow. doing that. That's actually brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's because uh, wow. I was always thinking, how could you, because it's still doing 15 degrees an hour, which is why this is what the, the globe earth always wants to do too, is they want to change the way you word things. Like when they talk about the spin of the earth, they don't want you to talk about in linear speed by miles per hour, because that's insane that the equator is going a thousand miles per hour and somebody at the North pole is going zero, right? You would think if you flew in a plane and got from one place to the other, you would certainly notice the difference. If I was just moving a thousand, now I'm moving 50, right. but uh, that doesn't happen. So they're able to just uh, basically explain all that away. It's just uh, all that they've ever have done is basically they have, uh, they call it rotations per day. So they say, no, it's one rotation per day. Well, yeah, if you're looking at it that way, of course, they're both the same. They both rotate once per day. But right. the problem with that is the linear speed is the difference, right? So they always say like, well, imagine a carousel. If a carousel went around once a day, you wouldn't feel it was moving. And that's true. But a carousel also has uh, you know, 200 foot circumference not a 24,901 mile circumference which necessitates you going a thousand miles per hour now make that carousel 24,901 miles in circumference and then flip that on at a thousand miles per hour and you'll see that everything on the edges would fly off 
Right. It's moving a thousand miles per hour linear speed. So they don't want to say that. They always want to say, uh, it's, oh, it's rotations per day. It's going a thousand miles an hour and it's curving a mile, a mile, you know, like off its off its trajectory. People go, you know, you don't notice that when I'm on an airplane, I could drink water and I can go up and go to the bathroom. I say, you want to compare the the movement of an airplane to the slowest movement of the earth, which is the spin. First, you have to double the speed of the airplane because it's only going 500 miles an hour. Then you have to take the outside of the airplane off because there is no cover over the globe. And you have to nose down faster than a free falling skydiver. And then let me know how your water's doing. And you probably don't even need to go to the bathroom anymore because you went in your pants. And I still believe, and I'm pretty sure this is the case, that if you're on a plane or a train, I used to take a train to school for three years of my high school, and you can walk faster in one direction than the other. It, it is a, I mean, it's a known thing. And right. they pretend like it doesn't. They pretend like that because it wouldn't be, if that's the case, then every pole jumper and every long distance runner and every uh, you know long jump runner would always ask to run to the West because of course <laughs> right. they're coming that direction. Yeah. But they don't. Oh. <laughs> There's a, great, to do there's, a great, direction there's a great uh, video by Matt Long, my former co-host. Uh, well, not my former co-host. We're still, still a co-host on the Flat Earth Podcast. We just haven't done an episode in two years. Five but, years. Yeah, but it's coming. It's coming. It's coming very soon. Um, <laughs> he, um, he, uh, he's, uh, he was like nearly a pro tennis player, and he did a thing about Coriolis and, uh, and tennis players and how uh, they would have to react to it if it was a thing. And it's, it's actually a g- genius video. So check it out. That's on the app on the frequently asked questions section. And if you go down to, um, where is it? Frequently asked questions. You go down to Coriolis. There's a Coriolis button somewhere on there. And, uh, and, mm-hmm. and then you, uh, you'll find it. Where is it? Oh, Coriolis right up here. Bam. Um, so, and there's great videos on there. So the app will answer all of your questions. Like, excuse me. <clears throat> the app will answer all the questions you have. Now I tell people, if your audience is listening and they're like, these guys are crazy. I used to think that when I first heard it too, I'm offering, yeah. I must be crazy because I'm offering three Bitcoins for one globe proof. If we live on a physical ball, you should be able to physically somehow prove that we live on a ball spinning, whirling and twirling. Um, and you win three Bitcoins. Not going to happen because we don't live on a ball. Um, <laughs> so I'll show you the, uh, comment if you want. Oh. I have one, I have one question before we go, before we go on here. Um, and one statement. So Dave, you mentioned, mentioned a video with a 102 year old woman that uh, was taught the flat earth. Yes. Is that on, is that on your, on your app or is that something that you have to dig up? No, no, it's on my, uh, it's on my YouTube channel, but now the app has a video search. So you click the little thing and just type in Ruth. Yep. Uh, let's see if this works. A uh, live performance and you Come type on. in Ruth and let's go. And uh, oh, it should be there. Ruth. Come on, Ruth. Ruth, where are you? It's a, uh, wow. I thought it would come right up. Um, this, I, did, I, did I not type Ruth, right? Ruth? I don't think Ruth would have been in the in the title, though. What, didn't you say like 103 oh, year old woman? Let's, or let's say, let's write, let's write 102. Let's see what happens. Um, type in 102. 102 year. While you're doing that, I want to tell everybody that the, the, the roof on your lid uh, <laughs> is 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 something that we need to talk about because yeah. you mentioned it before but go ahead and talk about ruth so this this is ruth and i interviewed her um from um i i i uh, I, had, I was interviewing her about the about um the world's fairs and her memory was so good and i said what did they teach you in science class in elementary i asked her where she went to elementary school knew the name knew the teacher knew the road the school everything it was in hamden connecticut public school and she goes they taught me the earth was flat in the 1920s and uh we're like, wow. So, and uh, when I told her that the earth was, uh, we're at the center of creation, everything, she broke down in tears. It was like the most emotional thing ever. Like every, all the comments, go look at the comments on the video. Everyone's like, you know, I was watching it, but something got stuck in my eye and I, I'm, some of the water's <laughs> leaking from my eye. I'm not sure why that is. And um, it literally, you know, and I've been talking to her for a couple of years since then. And she is so happy to know, you know, cause she's a Bible believer um, and, and she just, you know, n- likes to know that, Hey, we are at the central cre- center, center of creation, whether you believe in the Bible or not, doesn't matter. Um, you know, we are at the center of creation is, uh, is what the, what, what's going on. Speaking of the Bible this Friday, December 2nd in Tennessee, there's a big Bible debate. Um, Greg Locke, who has, uh, the global ministries, Bible church, um, a giant mega church. 
he had a meltdown about flat earth because a lot of his um his um people came up and were pushing flat earth and he's like earth is not flat it's not in the bible so he's having this huge debate all sorts of media is going to be there people are flying in from all over the world to it it's gonna be thousands of people there it's gonna be crazy you're gonna be live streaming it but if you have the app you'll get a pop-up on saturday that'll tell you uh give you the live stream to watch it it's going to be incredible it's gonna be incredible it sounds biblical it's it, it is it is gonna be biblical and jaron you know who's coming jeffrey doherty's coming he's gonna be there he's coming yes it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy so um that that's something so Talk about the hat real quick, and then we're, and then we're, more importantly, the summit. If you want to learn about health freedom, if you want to learn about flat earth, if you want to learn about so many things that are going to improve your life, this is the greatest thing ever. It's a virtual summit. If you can't come to things like the thing in Tennessee or, or Flattoberfest in Vegas that we just had, this is, uh, this is going to be great. But on the app, if you go to the shopping cart, um, right now there's a little pop-up for, for this. This is um, the true tin, the real tinfoil hat. And uh, it is, um, it, it's right here. It's the shop sparrow. This is by the guy that did the the movie um, about chemtrails called Franken Skies. Write that down, Franken Skies. And and you should you need to watch that um, about you know the spraying of the skies. But this hat here's another one. It has this silver lining in it. It's literally a Faraday cage. This one has the same. And when I put it on, I have to tell you, I feel calmer now. Is it all in my head? Pun intended. Um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that it's that it is literally because I you know I open up my phone there's there's Wi-Fi there's like 10 15 20 different Wi-Fi's coming at me from all over let alone the cell tower so it is a the the true tinfoil hat and um I love it they're actually high quality hats and I highly recommend great Christmas gifts you know what to get your kids your wife your friends your office, buy a ton of these hats and they also have clothing the shorts are amazing um and what do I get from it. I get the joy of knowing that people are protecting themselves from Wi-Fi. I get nothing from this. The things on the shopping section here are things that um, I love and, and have tested and, and use. Um, that's all that's on here. And most you know, 90% of them are flat earth related, um, all sorts of stuff. But more importantly, right here, the Mount Maru Summit. Jaron, I'll let you take it from there and uh, tell them what it's all about. Thanks. Yeah, if they go to trueearther.com or they can go to flat or Dave, that was an easy way, but trueearther.com and you get to the page. We're having a two day event, December 8th and 9th. It is a virtual event or at home event. So you just get to watch from wherever your bed or your bathtub or your backyard, whatever you want. And you can also watch it after the event. So if you can't watch it live, uh, you get it forever. Uh, and there's some great presentations going to be helping people get centered, but we've got people, a lot of people would recognize that David Avocado Wolf and Foundering uh, Dr. Amanda Vollmer, Stephen Dragon, people know Justin Harvey from uh, his work on vaccines, uh, Dr. Kelly Brogan, you guys know Dave Weiss, music from Deepak, uh, Dr. Andy Kaufman, if people know him from uh, recent, uh, Mike Winter from Alphabetic, uh, Jen Isabel is going to be there, Jay Tolan Media, if you don't know Jay Tolan, um, I actually have this up over here, Jay Tolan has done some of the best work with infrared, and he'll be presenting, you'll see here, this is- Oh, so yeah. I've where, seen that stuff. Yeah. yeah, Mount San Jacinto, which we would never see before. We would just see this. People would assume this is the uh, edge of the world. And really, if you look back behind there because of the infrared, we can see these mountains that uh, would be way behind uh, the curve yeah. on a globe earth. So he's done uh, tremendous work and we'll be presenting there. So we've got him. We've got uh, Stellium 7, who does some fantastic stuff. It really uh, opens some people's eyes. Ira Landucci always does great work. Alan from Space Audits, his first time presenting. He's been awesome. And uh, Austin Witsit and I are, are putting it on, hosting it. So yeah, it's a great two-day event, and it's basically both full days. And we have comedy at the end of it, and we've got some raffles to give away, and you get a, a gift bag. And it's all it's cheap. It's fifty dollars to go. Again, it's two days, and you actually get to select when you go through the process of who you want to support uh, from this group. And basically, they get half of the proceeds. So we do it so that we give back to uh, those who are doing great work. They present something nice, we give back to them. And then at the same time, providing kind of a, a roundup for most people that maybe don't have time to watch all of our stuff. Now you get to get kind of the best of, of each of these people. Um, and we do it about every four months right now. We're doing uh, three a year. So yeah, this is the Mount Maru. It's our second annual. And uh, we hope you come out and check it out and support these people doing great work. You'll definitely walk away uh, learning something totally new and seeing that it's not just Dave and I talking about it. It's yeah. all these people that are- And just, just that time- I just want to oh. clarify. So it's virtual, right? I mean, you're not- you're, you're right. not actually having to go anywhere. You can just right. buy the ticket ahead of time and and just click in and 
and if you want to do whenever you want to do vip you can be in the zoom and and ask questions live or you can just be in the chat you know be in the chat they kind of monitor chat it's it's super fun amazing and that top row right there amanda volmer um you can't even like you're basically getting her private time for this and her private time is very expensive every it's it's the greatest deal ever i told jaron he should raise the price but he's like nope i want more people there um and 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 it's good and when you sign up did you tell them that they have to you select oh yeah you select who you want to support david weiss and um and 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 (laughs) half the ticket money goes to uh that that person and it's just a great way to support people in the in the in the truth movement because you know that we're highly supported when we go out there and put our lives on the on the line you know you get highly compensated i'm I'm sure you know (laughs) right we also accept uh, all these different crypto coin so it's good if somebody wants to do private you can do monero you can do uh, oh that's great lots of them you know ether litecoin bitcoin cash tron all you can name them forever but yeah when you go and pick one let's say we're going to do doom doom die uh, as soon as you get here it's basically put your email in and then here's a uh, select from this list of who you want to support so jay tolan media uh david weiss is right there i'm sure people want that to be auto selected and then uh split by everyone you can do that as well and if you pick that one it would just be the half of the proceeds split between everybody who's presenting. So we do it in a way. And then also you get a coupon bag where we basically get a bunch of people to submit coupons for their stores, whether it be, you know, maybe they've got a truth apparel store, or maybe they've got a bug out store. And uh, we give coupons to both the, the general attendants and the VIPs. VIPs get slightly better deals. And uh, that way we kind of make it. So it's 50 bucks, but you'll actually be making more than that. As weird as that sounds, uh, you'll get more than that in savings that you would, uh, you know, I pr- I provide consultations for different services, and uh, I give fifty percent off that. So if you buy the ticket for fifty dollars right away, you've already made that money back if you uh, use my coupon at all for the next year. So it's it's kind of like that, but on a bigger scale. There's lots of people providing coupons, so we try to make it so that it's beneficial to everybody. Uh, it is called Mount Maru too. We had Mount Maru one last year, and uh, yeah. And then also, I just want to show on this homepage here, we also have uh, a special lots of value. Here. Yeah, and then conspiracy music guru. If people don't know who he is. Alex Michael does great uh, work. He's got five albums that he's put out um, over the past, whatever that's been, five years or six years. And he's selling them all right now for 23 bucks on our site only. Uh, you come here and click this, and then basically it's going to give you a link when you buy it to all the songs on MP3, plus all the album art, plus some extras, some videos, things like that. So he's all for 23 bucks. Uh, it would cost much more. I forgot how much, like 60 bucks or something on his site. Um, and he's just doing it for the you know, the year 23 and uh, to for the summit special. So if people are interested in getting his music, you would have it all. You could have it all in five minutes. Just go over here and uh, go to that item for 23 bucks and you'd be listening to his music uh, in a second. So that's it. Nice. And so um, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be great. Um, I'm, I'm not presenting, but I'm on a uh, panel and uh, the question and answer panel is always fun at the end of the night on for this Friday night, right? Yeah, Friday night. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Well, that's yeah, going to be great. Be you got, if you haven't heard of Foundering, Foundering's awesome. He's like a uh, who's the guy's name that used to do the music in the back in the day, like fifties or sixties. Tom Lerner, I think his name is something like that. He's a you know satirist. They kind of uh, make fun of different songs, and he does great work. He actually got kicked off YouTube. He's only on Odyssey now. But uh, some of the if you ever heard the song "Speed of Science" is done by him. Anyway, he's great, and he'll be presenting uh, some music on Friday night as well. Oh, that's uh, amazing. That's going to be fantastic. Um, was there something else that you're going to show there, Dave? No, I'm just going to show, you know, for, for those of you that are doubting on this, and we all were, we all have the same story. We all ridiculed it, refused to look at it. Um, you know, and they're like, well, Flat Earth is, uh, is, is stupid. And these are the people that have my app, right? Let's just zoom into the East Coast here. These are the people that have my app. I think it represents less than 1% of the Flat Earthers in the world. Um, and they're, they're everywhere, and it's, they're not going away. Once you wake up to Flat Earth, you... Uh, you um, never can go back. And then you start seeing the world for what it is. And you start freeing yourself from the matrix. Um, and I, I, I guess the term is the hive mind. When enough people know something, you figure out everything. Right. You have a, a, a jar, a fishbowl of jelly beans, and you have a ton of people gas. Take the mean number. It's within one or two jelly beans of the exact number. It, it's amazing how the hive mind works. When you have enough people and we have enough people looking at flat earth, it would have been taken apart if it was a CIA Department of Defense, you know, psyop to discredit truthers. Um, it's it's not, and it's growing, and it's growing faster and faster. And um, I feel that it is the solution for um, for freeing us from from their system. If we play on their game board, 
with their monopoly money. We have to follow mm -hmm. their rules. We need to get off their game board. We need to get off their fake money and we need to make our own rules. And they, they proved to you every day that they are not to be trusted. I mean, if you remember like a month or two ago or something, they said, oh, this tornado is going to hit or hurricane's going to hit California. And it was on the news for weeks and it was, you know, days and it was like, you know, prepping for this. And then nothing ever happened. It was like nothing, even a you know, little wind. But then what happened to uh, Acapulco in Mexico happens and they don't report on it at all. So no. this is what they do is they lie to you and they make you worry and they make you fear. And then when something actually does happen, then they don't even inform you about it. So this should tell people that uh, these people are not on your side. They're actually actively against you. And when they're the ones telling you that flat earth is the stupidest belief in the world and they're calling each other flat earthers and saying, we don't have time for the flat earth society. Why do you think that that is? Do you really think it's because that just happens to be the dumbest belief in the world? And if it is, why are so many people looking into it and then coming to the conclusion that it has more merit than the spinning water ball flying through space at 1.2 million miles per hour and that these great men of, of science can look in a little tube with glass and see back in time. That's what they're telling you. And people are like, oh, I believe it. And they can date rocks and they know the age of the earth. And if you just uh, shed that worry about people thinking less of you because you don't believe the same as them, you'll quickly realize that you're believing in lies and they might be comfortable, but they're lies. Well, it's it's uh, it's crazy. Obviously, we talked about this before. It's a crazy time. And they're using, when you question something like this, uh, they're using that as a derogatory term to diminish anything that you say, right? Uh, obviously, they just call you a flat earther to try and uh, discredit you and uh, and take you out of the game, right? No, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, the high priest of scientism, he says, we don't have time to talk to flat earthers. Or, you, know, you know, Obama said that in his speech, you know, we don't have time for a meeting at the flat earth society. He wants you to go to the flat earth society. That's not us. That is... Uh, government run disinformation. But Neil deGrasse Tyson says he doesn't have time to talk to us. But for the last five years or longer, he's been making video after video after video after video straw manning us. Straw manning means saying that flat earthers believe this stupid thing and then and, and making it like how stupid it is. And guess what? Yeah, it is stupid. Everything he's saying is stupid because it's not what we do. It's that you know they show you Google uh, flat earth in space and you're gonna see a disc with water falling off of it. Nobody thinks that we're a flat, you know, that's flat earth. We're a pond on a plane. Yeah, we don't think we're in space. Right. We don't think we're floating through space. There's somebody else who believes that you can float in nothing. You're just floating in, in nothing. It's just crazy. It's because, and I think it's all atheists, really. It's yeah. people who got upset at the idea of a creator and they just, uh, rather than, you know, what did they create? They created, the, nothing created everything. So they were so against the idea of God creating everything, they changed it to nothing created everything. Yeah. And that's what's leading evolution. And that's what we have to look forward to when we die is all, Nothing. That's uh, why we're flying through nothing. They're they're hiding the creator. And, you know, for, for me to say that after, you know, I used to be, uh, I, I would call myself an atheist back, you know, long before I discovered flat earth. Um, they're hiding the fact that we are at the center of creation, that we have great power. They're putting us on their fake globe. So we have to mm -hmm. play, play with their rules versus um, have our divinity, have our free share of this world and understand what it is and what it was and our true potential. They don't want that. They want a, a class of workers, not thinkers. So, well, isn't that the, the, the basis of all of what we've talked about so far and every time is that they, they want to, they want to get rid of Christianity. They're trying to destroy Christianity and bring in their own science. It's, it's a classic tactic of, of, uh, of pulling down a society, basically creating a Marxist society um, where they're in control and we're just the the, the worker slaves, right? And what, one of and the way the problems and then we, we you know they supply the answers, right? So if we need the only time you need government is when there's disagreements between people. If everybody got along and everything was working great, uh, then you wouldn't need a government. So they have to be the ones who actually make the problems because if we if they get rid of problems, then they're getting rid of their own jobs. So we right. should just be smart enough to recognize that people don't do that. It's the same thing when a pharmaceutical company wants to give you some sort of injection that says now you won't get sick now you won't make us money we you would have made us money you would have been sick and come into the hospital system but now we're going to give you this medicine that you don't you won't get sick it's insane well why would any company be like oreos making cookies that make you not like oreo cookies it should, if that starts happening we should be questionable about oreos making cookies that are supposed to make us not like cookies <laughs> yeah the, so, i mean th this is sorry go ahead dave no i i forgot what i was gonna say i had a good point but i'll come back go ahead you first 
Well, I was just going to say that this is a, the, the basis of, of all of it is that um, so people that are questioning the earth and the globe, they're, they're not just questioning the earth and the globe. They're questioning everything uh, because really what we are is we've been lied to about everything is, is what I'm understanding. Yeah, a hundred percent. And you know, one of the wizard tricks that they do is um, they've hijacked the word science. They say flat earthers are anti-science and we're science. The truth is they're pseudoscience. They have no science. There's no science of the globe. There's none whatsoever. They just use the word science. We registered, Oh, science is a repeatable, observable, testable, measurable. And um, they don't use it at all. They just make up stuff and call it science. They go, well, we're science. You know, Bill Nye, the line right. guy with the bow tie is who you're trusting. Are you kidding me? He's a failed comedian. I just love your names of them. I, I, that's uh, phenomenal. <laughs> you actually have uh, Michu Kaku saying that nobody in his business, nobody in his field uh, uses the so-called scientific method, which is hilarious because the actual definition of pseudoscience is science pretending to be science that doesn't go through the scientific method. Yet we've got somebody saying all theoretical physics, because he says nobody in his business, nobody in his field uses the scientific method. So he's admitting that if they don't use the scientific method, if it's all flying by the seat of your pants, if it's just guesswork, if it's just theories, then you are doing pseudoscience. So they like to just turn it and say, oh, flat earthers are doing right. pseudoscience, even though we don't do anything of the type, right? Like 97% of the known universe right now is said to be dark matter and dark energy, which means that they've never, they don't know what it is. They just made up a, a term for it. I mean, that's insane. It's not part of science at all. And it would be like us. You won't hear us saying, if you ask Dave, Dave, what keeps the sun and moon up on the flat earth? It's the literal equivalent of us saying dark lift. And then you saying, oh, what's that? Well, we know that there's something keeping it up there. So we're going to call it dark lift and we're going to move on. That's what the globe gets away with. And they, they act like they're just, oh, everything's perfect. 97% of the universe right now is a placeholder in mathematics. It's dark matter and dark energy, something that's never been seen, never been tested, never been found. Yet they just know it must be there. Well, that's not how science works. We can't just say we know it must be there, so we're just gonna uh, call it dark lift. Bruce, now, why not just say you just know? Never, never lend uh, Neil Disgrace Tyson a hundred dollars because he'll only pay you back four and say the other ninety six are dark money, dark dollars. So you have it, <laughs> but um, he's only give you four, and he's gonna say he's paid up in full. So just don't do it. <laughs> we'll find it eventually. It's there for now, though. Yeah, it has to well, be this, like that. It's just it like we don't straw the globe. We don't ever yeah. say. You won't ever hear me making up fake things about the globe. I won't say they think we're flying, you know, 99 trillion miles per hour. No, because their actual belief is absurd that they think we're flying 1.2 million miles per hour and that we're flying around the sun at 66,600 miles per hour. Like that's, I'm not straw manning them yet. Everything, if you listen to their side is all a straw man. They take what we actually say. They right. find some part of it that they can twist. And then they say, look how stupid this is. We know this isn't true, but all their proofs are not actual proofs. Uh, they're simply, you know, the kind of proof where if I said, well, we expect on a globe that we would see the sun rise top first and see the sun set uh, bottom first. So, and then we go look and look at, we see the sun do exactly that. So therefore we're on a globe. That's everything that they have, which is not how you do science. That's called uh, a logical fallacy. You know, just because you can always be wrong on that, right? If this, then that, that doesn't necessarily mean that the first thing happened, right? So Darren. you can say, oh, if it rains, it gets wet. Darren's in California. Uh, I'm in Connecticut. Darren, if you went outside right now, could you see my house? No, I could. Earth is a globe. Then there's curvature. Earth, Earth is a globe. Is a globe. Right. You can't see my house. That's it. The reason it's there yeah. Is behind it. Yeah. If we okay. can't see his house, then it must be because of curve. Okay. Yeah. One last thing, because I know you guys always you always sort of touch on this, is that the distance between the two of you, how far down are you if if you're actually using globe math? Oh, it's how ridiculous. far down yeah, under the, the curve. What's the, how far between uh, across the United States? Because just in the in Kansas, from one end of Kansas, the, what what is it? 721 miles of curve between Dave and I. 721 miles yeah. below the curve is what you presumably yeah. would, would have to be. In Kansas, right. well, one, end, one end of Kansas to the other, I don't want to show that. Um, one end of Kansas to the other would show um, 40 miles of curvature. I think that's right. Four, is it 40 miles or 20? I think it's 40 miles. This balloon is only 20 miles up. So the curvature from Kansas is twice the height of this balloon. Right. You can't even fathom what that is. I mean, trying to like lift up Kansas to make it go up the height. I mean, if your plane was flying up this high, you'd, you'd, you'd crap yourself. 
Okay. So, so yeah. that's, that's a, the alleged curvature from one end of Kansas to the other. It's so, just to make it's sure so right about that, yes. here, here's it's the thing. Absurd. They make it so absurd that you just short circuit and go, well, I can't figure that out. Cause I don't have a degree. I got to, right. you know, I got to trust uh, the, the high priestess of scientism. I was wrong. It's 790, uh, 789 miles, Dave. Okay. And crazy yeah. number. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot of curve, right? Uh, could, you could just do the, the miles squared times eight and then divide that by 12 and divide by 5280 to get your answer. But uh, one that I saw the other day that I thought was incredible is if you took the sun, which is supposed to be 867,000 miles wide, which is insane. We can see it up in the sky. It looks generally pretty small. But uh, if we took the sun and we shrunk it down to a golf ball, right, which would be keep the earth on like a grain of sand, basically. But where do you think that the next sun would be? So the next star, you know, the stars are supposedly suns, the next star, right? How far do you think away it is? If we take this sun, shrink it down to a golf ball. Now it's a golf ball. How far would the next golf ball be? What would your guess be from that golf ball? hundred yards, you know, one mile. What do you think from a golf ball? In scale. Any guess? The, Bruce. Oh yeah. Bruce? Sorry. Um, um, my guess would be uh, in the next state. Right. It's a 750 miles. So, that's literally the top of California to the bottom. So imagine that we have little tiny people that live on the little tiny grain of sand, which is already impossible to even fathom. We can't get on a grain of sand. But little tiny people there that are so smart that they're able to tell you the distances and the gases and everything that's going on with a golf ball that's uh, the state of California away. I mean, it's just stupid. It's it's yeah, absurd. It's, you have, it's to, so you have absurd. to just give up. Yeah, you just have to give up all your senses. This is what they want from me, right? This right. is total submission to the system when you actually believe that you're spinning and you don't even just believe it. You'll go make fun of other people. There's people that will laugh in our face, probably spit in our face because they were told yep. something and we don't believe what they were told. Well, That's we've seen it. We've seen it before. I mean, we've seen it in the history, but we've seen it over the last three years. As soon as you um, <clears throat> have a belief that uh, goes against the agenda, then you are, uh, uh, you know, discredited. You're, you're isolated. You're, all the other, all the other things. Go ahead, Dave. Bruce, this this ball is flat. There is no curvature to this ball because there's no curvature, right? If you have a sphere, um, spheres must be flat like the Earth because this is a, a view of these mountains that are over 700 miles away. Eight of them, 700 miles away. The from this altitude, using globe math, our globe math. The tops of these mountains should be over 40 miles below the physical curve. A physical curve. 40 miles. Below, 40 yeah. miles below. But we can see almost the whole mountain. But you can't, you know, these mountains in the front are blocking the bottoms of those mountains because things get smaller. When you understand how perspective works, I encourage people to go to my channel, go to get my app, go to my, my website, um, and just watch the videos. On my channel, D-I-T-R-H, stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. I have all short videos, like five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. Um, and just just go through a whole bunch of them, and then you'll start to see. And um, hey, you know, the the whole why the lie is the most important thing because when you wake up to flat Earth, uh, to the reality of this world, you start unplugging from the matrix. This is a spiritual war that yeah. we're in, and they're taking our energy. They're literally taking our energy, taking our divinity, taking our lives, keeping us sick, keeping our minds small, and not letting us connect. Uh, you know, keeping the population down. That's all another thing. You know, I believe that there used to be a lot more people here on Earth um, back before whatever happened in the 1800s. Hmm. Interesting. Guys, I know that we, uh, we're at the end of our time here, so I want to say thank you. Uh, uh, Jaron, you want to just throw out your website before we take off? Sure, yeah. Jaronism.com on YouTube is Jaronism, J-E-R-A-N-I-S-M. And uh, check us out. Go to Flatter Dave. You can find me from there, too. And I uh, just hope to see you at the summit, which will be uh, December 8th and 9th next weekend. Uh, and go to trueearther.com. Thank you. Fantastic. And uh, Dave, I, I we can't go to D I T A T R H anymore. We go to Flat Earth Dave. We direct Earth, Dave. all the energy Earth, to Dave. flatearthdave.com. All my social yeah. media is there. If you want to book me for a show, if you want to find the summit, if you want to find, I'm actually speaking at Anarchapoco this year in February in Acapulco. Um, you know, if you want to have another amazing in person event that uh, that's uh, looking for a vacation, that's uh, that's the place to go. All the links are there. Everything's there. If you want to find out that Elon Musk is not our savior and he's a fraud, click the Elon Musk banner on my website. If you want to um, look at the, cra the crash course, you don't want to get the app, that's fine. Um, just go to the crash course. Watch those videos. Waken yourself. Unplug from the matrix. And um, 
life only gets better and better. It's amazing. Fantastic. Thanks guys so much for, for joining me on unscrew the news. God bless. And uh, let's make the world a, um, I guess a truer place. I was going to say better, but let's say truer. Nice. Thank you.